Hello and welcome to Boring Objects. My name's Jason Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, basically with these recordings, I just like focus on a particular subject or object and talk about that thing for, I don't know, maybe half an hour, maybe longer. So, you know, I've, I've done a few of these and this is another one now I thought I'd uh, mention shoes I'm not sure if I've talked about shoes before but I'm going to talk about shoes so if I have talked about shoes before this is just another Recording about shoes. <laughs> so, I think the main objective to this is so kind of it gives you an opportunity to relax, to switch your mind off, to focus on something completely different and almost, I guess, irrelevant, yet in that process you allow yourself the opportunity to calm your mind and to feel more relaxed both physically and mentally so both in your body and in your mind calming down and letting go of the tensions of the day. So at the very least it can be a break, uh, a rest, a, a short break from the day where you can just relax a little bit. by me talking to you about a boring object or subject. So the object today is shoes. Now, I've been wearing shoes for quite a while. Not the same pair, but, you know, various different types of shoes. Right now, I'm wearing Crocs. I've never really understood why they're called Crocs. I mean, they, they don't have teeth. They look nothing like crocodiles. Um... And they've got holes in them. You know, they're plastic. And they've got holes in them. I mean, I'm trying to think of something else that they look like, but... Um, no, I can't think of anything. I'll give it some thought while I make this recording. 
See if I can think of something that uh, my Crocs resemble. Well, right now they resemble really old, worn-out Crocs, which they are. But they're, you know, relatively comfortable. Um, I don't, I don't normally wear them when I'm sitting down and relaxing. I just forgot to take them off, or I forgot to leave them on the floor because, you know, there's no. It's quite easy to take them off. But they're on my feet, so I'll just leave them there for now. It's not really a... I don't know why I didn't take them off. I mean, normally I do. I keep them on when I sit down on the chair at the desk. But then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't bother putting them on at all when I go to the desk. But quite often I do. And then when I'm at the desk and I'm perhaps making a recording or something like that or working online, I take the crocs off and they end up like moving around. I mean, not on their own, but I kind of, I guess I play with them with my feet. Um, yeah, I suppose I guess when I make a recording, I just play with myself. So... Sometimes the shoes or the Crocs are back to front. So I go to put them on and my feet still goes in. Because luckily my feet are bendy. No, they're not. But they're, you know, this, they do go in, but they're on the wrong feet. And this kind of doesn't feel right, you know. So I take them off and I put them onto the, the correct feet. I do. I don't have to bend over or anything because there's no there's no laces or nothing to tie up. They just slip on, which is uh, useful, you know. But when I go out of the room, because I'm in the living room now, when I go into I don't know, for example, the kitchen. I do wear my Crocs. Um, when I go into the bathroom, I do wear the Crocs. Uh, when I go into the bedroom, I wear my Crocs. Or if I go into the storage room, I wear my Crocs. Or if I'm... You know, going and answering the front door or just going for a walk around the flat, which is not necessarily something that I would do, just randomly walking around. But I might go into the hallway because there's a mirror there just to check, see if I've got any, make sure I've got no weird hairs sprouting out of my face or ears. And I wear my Crocs for that as well. But sometimes if I've got my shoes on, I wear my shoes. So, for example, if I've been out and I've come back in and I'm doing something on the laptop and then I need to go into the kitchen... I don't take my shoes off to put my Crocs on to go into the kitchen. I'll just leave my Crocs on. Not that my shoes on, rather. Or if I need to go into the bathroom, I won't take my shoes off and put my Crocs on to go into the bathroom. I'll just wear my shoes. Or if I need to go into the bedroom... I won't take my shoes off and put my Crocs on to go into the bedroom. I will generally just wear my shoes that I'm wearing. Or 
if someone knocks on the door and uh, I need to answer the door, then I would just keep my shoes on as opposed to changing into my Crocs. Or, you know, if I'm just wandering around. I mean, quite often I like to just, if I've got my shoes on, I don't leave them on. Sometimes I will take them off. It's because I've forgotten to take them off. So I might come home from being out. So I come in from being out. So I was outside of the flat. So I want to get inside the flat. I'll lock the door. And usually my normal kind of routine is I take my, I put the keys on the hanger, the key thing. I take my jacket off or my coat off and I hang that up. And then, now it depends what I do next. If I've got a bag of shopping, then I will either take it into the living room, put it down on a chair, and it depends what... It depends what kind of shopping it is. See, if it's just bottles of water, then I leave them in the living room. Uh, If it's something, maybe I bought something from, from the garage or the petrol station that I'm going to eat, like now or, you know, very, very, very soon. I'll also leave those in the living room. But if there's something that I um, need to refrigerate or, you know, some shopping that I need to put in the freezer, then generally I just go straight into the kitchen. And then I put the carrier bag on the counter because the layout of my kitchen... um, there's a counter on the left. So if you if you walk in, let's say if you walked into the kitchen and then you, you didn't do anything else, you just stayed in that direction that you're looking at. Directly to my right is a freezer. And then further up, it's a quite small kitchen, there's a there's a counter and on the counter, there is a fridge. Underneath the counter, there's a freezer. Then there's a microwave next to the fridge. And then there's a, a little bit of space. And very minimal counter space left. Then there's the cooker. Then there's some more counter space where my, uh, what's it called, the kettle, or the toaster first, and then the kettle, and then if I turn right, there's, then that's the sink and the draining board. And there's a little bit more counter space, but that's uh, where the boiler is. So the the gas boiler is above there. So I don't normally really use that counter space for anything. I pretty much just leave it empty. So if I have... stuff in the carrier bag that needs to be put into the kitchen I'll maybe come into the front door lock the door 
usually I will take my coat off first and I'll walk straight into the kitchen. And then I will put the bag onto the counter um, where the kettle and the toaster are, that that area, because there's some space there. And then I'll take the objects out of the carrier bag, or bags if there might be more than one bag, and if there's more than one bag, sometimes I'll put one of the bags on top of the cooker. So I take the stuff out of the bags. If they're kind of a bit muddled up, I'll organize them into two piles. One for the freezer and one for the fridge. And then I'll, I'll scrunch the bags up. But I'll probably put one bag inside the other bag and then I put them inside another collection of bags that's inside a big bag in the kitchen so I've got two of those big bags with lots of carrier bags in one's currently on top of the fridge it used to be on top of the clothes basket that was next to the other freezer which was sort of close to the washing machine but now I've moved it to above you know on top of the fridge and there's another bag a carrier bag bag inside the bathroom there's a a big cupboard in the bathroom and I just have some carrier bags inside a big bag in there so when I say a big bag what I mean is do you know the, the ones that you pay for that are maybe a pound or I don't know maybe a dollar or two dollars whatever and they're quite sturdy they're made of quite firm plastic and they should last. You know, they do, well, they do last. I've had bags, I've got bags that I've had for years and years. And this, that, that, they're quite good for holding all of the other bags. Now bags these days, carrier bags, are like gold dust. So I try and hold on to them because they're very important now. Because there's some shops won't give them out anymore. And I've always been, I've always reused them over and over and over again. So, uh, which is sort of, I think quite useful yeah, even when I go to the petrol station to purchase something from the petrol station I try to remember try to remember to take a carrier bag with me so that I don't have to buy one not that I'm worried about the 10 pence to buy one but the ones they give us are so flimsy. So flimsy. You know. It's, you, it, it's just, yeah. A very, very... Um, I wouldn't even trust a packet of bisques, biscuits. That's weird. Bisques. I wouldn't trust a packet of biscuits to get home safely without ripping through. 
mind you, if you were about to be dunked into tea and eaten, you'd probably want to escape as well, wouldn't you? So, but yeah, I take my own bag generally, which means then, I mean, I've used the same bag over and over and over and over and over again, many, many times. Which is pretty cool, I think. I mean, not that particularly exciting, maybe, to you, but to me, it's it's everything. <laughs> nah, not really. Now, sometimes, if I've got my shoes on, and I'm sitting at the computer desk, I get up to go to the bathroom or the kitchen and I realise I've got my shoes on. I've forgotten to take them off. So I will actually go into the bedroom and take my shoes off and put my Crocs on before going into the kitchen or the bathroom. Because once I'm in doors, once I'm home, and I don't need to particularly do anything I will then try and relax myself and I find that taking my shoes off is quite a nice way to Relax my feet. Because my feet enjoy feeling relaxed. They they, feel, they get very grateful. They don't actually thank me. You know, not, you know, not verbally anyway. But they do. I get a sense of, ah. Oh, you know that feeling just oh, that's nice so that's that's my crocs uh the shoes I wear at the moment I've been wearing what are they are these stretches stretcher sleeper stretcher something like that and I quite like them because they're shoeless shoeless they're, they're laceless so there's no laces and so I can just slip them on is it stretcher I can't remember the name but they're nice I quite like them I've, uh, this is my second pair I think that I've had Maybe my third pair. Maybe my second. And they do the job. They do the job. To be fair, I probably have had other pairs. I've just forgotten about them. Why I didn't pay any attention to what they were. I mean, I knew they were shoes, but, you know, I wasn't looking at them and thinking, I wonder if I can cook with these. You know, no, I knew they were shoes. They they were shoes, so, because I wore them on my, on my feet. So, I've had quite a few pairs of shoes, and... I can't remember the first pair of shoes I had, but there was a picture of me. Well, I do have a picture of me with these little boots on. And I'll be honest, they didn't they don't look very good for outdoor walking. Not very good for the weather, you know, for windy and wet weather. But I was a baby, so I'm not sure. I guess it didn't matter. It's almost like, why did I even have boots on to start with? If, if I'm not going to be in the mud or jumping into puddles, why give me boots? 
but I suppose they weren't really boots, they were just little baby feet covers. So I had them. I don't remember the first pair of shoes or even any shoes that I had through childhood. The first pair of shoes, I don't know, it's this. The first pair of shoes I remember. That I have a memory of really was the boots I had when I was in the Sea Cadets. So I was about 12, 11 or 12. And these were big old boots. And I had to keep them like not just clean but shiny where you could see your face in. So it was. Um, a lot of melted melted wax on the end of the boots and a lot of spit and polish and it's it's, it's a technique that takes a while to learn but there's there was a satisfaction of doing it I'll be honest and, and it does take it Hours and hours and hours. But it kind of felt quite nice to accomplish what I was, you know, aiming to do. Now, I think my oldest brother taught me how to do it because he was in the Air Cadets. So I think he taught me how to do the boots and how to make them all... Uh, shiny and stuff and we used to sit outside doing it together so that was that was quite nice I mean it was uh, I vaguely remember it but I guess it was quite nice to do something with my brother that we were both sort of doing the same thing so that was nice. Um, the next pair of shoes I remember was these ones. They were quite a quite thick inner soles, and I think they made me a bit taller than I was, so I liked them. But they're kind of like boots. I mean, I chose them. My mum took me to the to the shoe shop, but I, you know, I chose the ones that I liked, and she bought them, had them, you know, tried them on. So it's not like she took me and said, "You're having them." I, I did sort of choose the ones. I think it was a choice between a few ones like that, that, or that one. And um, but I said, "Okay, that one then." And she said, well, I need you to actually point, because just saying that one is not helpful. I said, well, you said that, that, or that one. And I said, that one. The last one, obviously. We didn't talk for a few hours after that. I think she got a bit annoyed with me. But anyway, I took, I went to school, I was all like, oh, because I felt taller. I've always been kind of short. I mean, I'm not, not the shortest person in the world, but I'm well below average when it comes to men in the UK anyway, at least. And being, I think I was probably about 14, 13, 14, when I had these shoes. And I went to school thinking, yeah. I, mean, I, was, I didn't expect anyone to even notice my shoes. But I felt quite a bit confident because I was, had an extra half an inch on my height. And as we all know, um, when you men are listening, half an inch is 
always welcome, isn't it? An extra half an inch. And people started laughing at me and telling me that I was wearing beetle crushers. Beetle crushers? Apparently they were big, too big, too big and clumsy. Someone said I'd look like Boris Karloff. I'm like, okay. I mean, in the 80s, you could get away with saying Boris Karloff because most people probably knew who he was even then. Now, you're probably going to have to Google it. Boris Karloff. It's Boris Karloff. I'm not telling you. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, Beetle Crushers. At the start, I didn't mind because some of the people saying it were my friends. But then it got to like, okay, all these years I got through school without a nickname. Now Beetle Crusher. I didn't like the nickname. But, you know, they got bored after a while and moved on to the next thing. So, the next pair of shoes, oh, I remember, I was doing karate, and my dad took me to London to a a martial arts shop where they sold all kinds of stuff like, uh, you know, kung fu things, weapons, and... um, magazines and I guess punch bags so he bought me some shoes some uh, kung fu black shoes that kind of the ones that um, Bruce Lee wore in Enter the Dragon and some trousers kung fu trousers again same kind of style I was so happy. And the trousers were really baggy. And I I used to wear them every day to training. It was so, so good. It was absolutely brilliant. I think I also got some throwing styles as well. Maybe some nunchucks, but I think I bought them myself uh, separately. But I definitely had those shoes, or they were more like slippers, really. Slippers that you could walk around in. Not money, I suppose. All slippers are slippers that you can walk around in, aren't they? You don't buy slippers that, well, no, I can't, can't walk in these. I can only stand in them. Can't take steps. Or ones that you can only look at. Or keep them in a glass cabinet. I can only look at them. Can't wear them. Aren't they nice? The next pair of shoes I recall would be... Some... Oh, oh. I had these trainers... I worked in a chip shop and they were falling apart and I would be in water for hours in this it was the the part of the chip shop where in the in the back in the kitchen and it was sort of separated by a higher level and, and there was water there. I was basically standing in water all morning. Preparing the fish, preparing the potatoes, and my feet and socks would just be soaking wet. And pretty much, and they were stinky. They're the most stinky sh- trainers. The trainers, as in um, sports footwear, maybe sneakers, some people call them. 
in, in the UK, we call them trainers. And they were stinky and falling apart. Really, ugh. Really <laughs> not good. So the next pair of boots I bought, I think this was about... No, I was in 1986. I had these boots that were really nice. And they're like, like, I don't know, maybe cowboy boots. But they were really nice. And they were um, really cool boots. And I clicked every time I walked. It was very strange, and they were quite high, so it didn't make me taller by a few inches, probably. Basically, they were high heels, but they were for men. They were, <laughs> they were, I think. But the, oh, I loved, I loved my boots. I used to wear them a lot. Out, going out, not at work or anything. But I used to wear them for special, you know, special occasions like going to the pub or out on a date or something like that. And the next pair of boots or shoes I had. trying to think yeah I can't really remember and I've had a few pairs quite a few pairs over the years nothing is standing out in my memory no particular special pair of shoes uh, try and think back when I was a security guard I think I might have been given boots I still toe cap boots to wear No, oh, I can't remember boot any shoes. I was trying to think even through my twenties, thirties. Now in my late thirties I remember the shoes I got. Because I started buying hush puppies. And again they were slip ons. I really like them. I really And I bought the same pair of shoes every single time. I think for my five years, maybe longer. And it was exactly identical pair of shoes. So when the other one was starting to wear out, I'd get a new pair of the identical and I did that I think three or four times and then the shoes weren't available and then the shop that I bought them from closed so that was a bit a bit annoying and since then I bought some shoes, a couple of pairs 
from a shoe shop and it was they were quite good shoes quite decent ones but again they were just sort of slip on shoes and I had like two different versions of the same shoe one was black and another one I think was white with black stripes or something and they were comfortable and then that was it I sort of I suppose I, I got through them and then the stretchers or whatever they're called I can't remember the ones that I wear now I've got two pairs so the other one the other ones I've kept all of they're worn out a little bit but I kept them for when I go into the into the fields when it's muddy because I didn't want to get the new ones dirty but the new ones have got dirty now they're, they're fairly comfortable fairly comfortable and I do also have a pair of really good boots now not the cowboy boots I had when I was 16 actually I was 15 at that time um, but these are they're more I guess hiking boots they're really good they're really nice uh, but I don't really wear them because it involves doing the shoelaces up. And I haven't, I haven't really broken them in, which would be useful, if you know what I mean. Because... If I broke them in, then I'd be able to wear them without... Well, I'm a little bit concerned that I might get blisters if I walk for too too long or too far. And I, I do like to walk for long, long periods sometimes. You know, long distance, so a good few miles. And I don't know if the... If the boots can take that without leaving me with a you know sort of blisters on my feet which I don't really want yeah I thought I'd remember more more of the shoes that I've worn I genuinely can't. I can't think of any others. I've had a few pairs of trainers along the way. You know, Snickers or whatever they call them in America. Snickers. I had a few trainers, wore a few of those. Nothing, you know, particularly amazing. But I've had a few pairs of nice shoes that I wore, I wore but usually I'd seem to wear them out and then buy a new pair. Oh, there was a pair I had, and I bought them for a, a family occasion, specifically, and they were really nice shoes, you know, handmade, they weren't cheap, but they weren't comfortable, and I wore them, and at this occasion 
and it completely destroyed my feet. I was, I mean, I could hardly walk because of my blisters and everything. Um, so it wasn't a good idea. But I didn't have any shoes to wear. Now, and the I think the other shoe shop had closed at that point, so I couldn't go there. Now the strange thing about it is I didn't go anywhere near those shoes for months. And then I did start wearing them, like locally. You know, if I went to the shop or the petrol station or just had to do something. And they became my normal shoes that I wore all the time. You know, I broke them in. And they ended up being really comfortable. Hmm. That's the story of my shoes. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.